Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nettling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to grow your business to the next level. Today, I'm very excited to have Nancy Erickson as my guest. And let me tell you about Nancy. She is the book professor, coaching business professionals to become authors of high impact nonfiction books that will establish them as experts in their fields, increasing their credibility, helping to attract a following, expanding their business. When the book is finished, you can take each chapter and repurpose it to create online other revenue producing products that include seminars, workshops, online training, podcasts, and online courses. Nancy Erickson is the owner of two book-related businesses, The Book Professor and Stonebrook Publishing, an award-winning nonfiction publishing house. In 2022, she was named a top 10 book coach in the U.S. by the Coach Federation. Today, I thought we would talk about a very logical subject to this, <laughs> how to expand your business by writing a book. And please welcome Nancy Erickson. Thanks, Vicki. You know, I, you're on podcast too, and I just cringe when you start reading all that stuff, because it's like, I'm just a girl who likes books, right? You know, I know. I just, it's like, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, my but greatest... your wall gives you away. <laughs> you oh, love that's books. just one of my walls. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So um, I've been about over the last 18 years, just diving into what I really love, which mm-hmm. is helping people to um, really pull out their story and their message so that they can get it out into the world. I wasn't mm-hmm. always doing this, by the way. My original career was in high tech with IBM and Oracle Corporation. So <laughs> I, this is my second career and I like it a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a lot in common with you. I was, um, I guess this is my fourth career. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But, we, yeah, thank goodness we're not stuck with the same thing through yes. all stages of life. I know. And so when I retired from the last one, I decided that I would do, as you said, uh, what I love to do. So I am happy to have people like you that can can share the story. And last year, you know, for anyone that's listening, that's thinking, well, I don't know if I have a book in me. Just think, do you have a chapter and start there? And that's a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Because for me, last year I did four (laughs) chapters. Yeah, yeah. So four different books, four chapters. And well, it's now time I, for you to write your own book, Vicky. I am. I'm already in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yes. good. 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 But um, so I just want to anybody that's listening that's thinking, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Pay attention to what this lady says. Get your paper, pencil, and start writing notes. So we always start with an easy question. Good. What kind of part of the country do you call home? I'm in St. Louis, so I'm a ah. Midwestern kind of girl. Uh, I guess I should say I migrated north. I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ah. So I think I had just about lost that Oklahoma yes, twine. You did. You did. <laughs> but I've been in St. Louis for about the past 37 years. So, yeah, long you're enough. like me. I migrated from Pittsburgh and I never did have the accent, but. Uh, now I've been here longer than there, and I tend to have a Southern accent more so than I do. <laughs> well, Georgia, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
So you went from being this technical salesperson to being a book writing coach and a publisher. Mm -hmm. Talk to us, like walk us through what that journey was like, because it isn't one that is. This doesn't seem like a natural natural, progression. Yes. Well, it's, you know, people often ask me like, how did you get into this? And I'm like, sideways, you know, <laughs> um, I, I was a systems engineer for IBM. And then I worked for Oracle as an application sales manager and I was pretty good at it. You know, I was making a ton of money, um, like in the mid six figures. And also that, you know, that those are those golden handcuffs. Right. So, um, in 2006, my father was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor, and we knew that he would only live about seven months. That was the natural progression for a glioblastoma. So I quit everything, and I went, my parents had moved from Tulsa to uh, Florida, and so I went down there to be with them, you know, during that time, and a little bit afterward, um, after my dad passed away to be with my mom. And so when I came home, I was like, okay, now what am I going to do? You know, I quit my job. I didn't have the financial pressures that I had had at one point in my life. Cause my kids who are very close in age and I had pretty young, um, were my youngest had just graduated college right when my dad, um, was diagnosed. So I didn't really have to make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I thought, you know, there's such freedom in that <laughs> to get rid of those kids. <laughs> but um, I had always loved to write. I loved it when I was young. I had some stuff published when I was younger. And so I thought I'm going to go back to school and, and hone up my writing skills. So as I was looking through college things. I kept looking, I'm like, I've already done all that undergraduate stuff. So I ended up going back and getting a master's of fine arts in writing. And, uh, it, it just woke everything up in me, all the stuff that I had pushed down and forgotten that I loved. It was just like, you know, magic. And so when I graduated, they asked me to join the faculty at the university in St. Louis, where I, I had graduated to teach, you know, freshmen. <laughs> and so, um, and I started the publishing house at the same time. I always just wanted to do nonfiction because I just felt like those stories were, had more power. It, they weren't for entertainment. You know, there was more of a punch and a purpose to that. So um, I started the publishing house and the first book that we published was written by a Holocaust survivor who'd gone to school with Anne Frank. And we ended up, this is the first book, we ended up doing their book release in Amsterdam at their school. Oh my. And they had a beautiful ceremony at the school where they um, commemorated the 170 mm -hmm. students who'd been killed by the Nazis. Mm -hmm. And the only thing left in that neighborhood between, you know, 1945 and then was the school and across the street, the bookstore, oh. same bookstore. Oh and my so gosh. We did they did the ceremony at the school. We went across the street to the bookstore and did the the book release and mm. um it was pretty powerful. And then the next book that we published was um I you know we got back cover endorsements for the second book from Sir Paul McCartney <laughs> and Cindy Crawford. Oh and wow. I was like <laughs> you know talk about beginner's luck. And I was like Oh, I'm just doing great. I must know what I'm doing and blah, 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 all this stuff. And so I'm a spiritual person and I, mm -hmm. I really, those things were successes, but we were getting manuscripts from people and our focus always had been, I want to only work on material that will either save lives, change lives or transform society. And all of our business books do that. So that's, they come under that umbrella. But with they these manuscripts, they had a seed of those elements in there, but they were so poorly written. We couldn't oh. do anything with them. Oh, so I really had this God moment where it was just like, shh, you know, it was just kind of like, stop, take a step back, which I did. I didn't publish anything for a year. And during that time, I wrote a step by step by step by step process mm. so that regular people 
could follow that process and become authors of these high impact nonfiction books. Nice. And it's worked so beautifully. All we have needed was this process that takes you from yeah. your, just your idea all the way through the, the planning, the writing, the editing mm. and the publishing. So um, that's, you know, where I've dedicated my time. That part's called the book professor where we help people write. Stonebrook Publishing is a nonfiction gotcha. publishing house. We publish many other outside people's nonfiction books, but anybody who goes through our process, they're guaranteed that we will publish their book because we have a lot of input into the structure and the, not so much the content, but the, the professionalism of right. how the process developed. So you trust that it's good enough to sell. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. They're so good. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. What a great story to my Lord. So how do you help the business people, not just businessmen or women, but business people of all ages to be seen as the experts in their field? Is it through this professor? Um, yeah, well, it's both. So, yeah. So you already are an expert in your field. Because you know what you're doing mm -hmm. and other people don't. Yeah. And so um, when you walk through this process with us, what we do is we we pull that expertise out. You know, people are shy about that, particularly women, you know, mm -hmm. about like, you know, we don't say, oh, I'm really great. And, you know, let my light shine. Well, I'm going to shine the light on you so you don't have to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And what you have inside of you is so valuable and life-changing. You know, if you're an entrepreneur and you've figured that nut out, everybody else doesn't know what to do ever, particularly mm. since the pandemic, there's a lot of entrepreneurship. Nobody mm. wanna, wants to work for anybody else anymore, right? right? And so if you've figured that out and you can help people along the way, then that's great. If you're, you know, a, a financial planner, if you're a, you know, in any kind of an, in a profession, a, a, a legal or medical profession, people need to know what you know. And often we take it for granted that, oh, that's nothing. That's just, you know, I just know that. Yeah. But when you spend all your time as you have to um, become proficient at what you are, you mm -hmm. really are a subject matter expert. I mean, I can only do one thing really well. So I keep doing it over and over again. <laughs> So. And that's why I'd love to work with people like you, because, you know, you get somebody that has great ideas and, you know, can put them down on paper. And then you say, oh, by the way, you need to promote your book. <laughs> you need yeah. to go online. You need to do some lives. And that's a whole nother thing. And so I just I love it. It's like you can get their book written and then I'll help them be able to present it in a comfortable conversational way. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. Can you describe this process? So I walk in and I got an idea or I don't even have an idea. I just tell you that I do this and I want to yeah. write something. <laughs> and know, okay. that, that is not an all an unusual thing mm -hmm. where people say, I don't even have an idea. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. No worries. We're going to pull it out of you. Mm -hmm. So we always start, Vicki, with a series of what I call foundational questions. And those are things that are intended to help you crystallize your message. Um, the questions are things like, you know, why are you even doing this? What's your motivation? And mm -hmm. of course, it's to build your business and all that kind of stuff. You know, all of us want to make money and that yeah. type of thing. Um, and then things like, you know, who's, who specifically is your audience? And how will that audience be changed as a result of taking in your message? Yeah. And there's there are 12 of these questions. And we end up taking the answers and distilling them down into a purpose statement for the book. Ah. And what that says is the purpose of this book is to do this particular thing for this specific audience, period. Good job. You cannot put everything you know in a book. Not yeah. your whole life, not your whole um, you know, vast knowledge of what you do professionally. You can't put it all in a book. It has to be targeted and specific in order to make an impact. And so your purpose statement says what you're going to do and for whom. Now your job as the author becomes to lead the reader to realize oh. the purpose of that book. 
So when we start with that as the foundation, and this is a very, um, just a tiny step by step by step by step process that leads you to your finished product. But one of the most important things about your book is its structure. And a lot of times people will start writing the book and they get all tangled. First of all, it's harder than you think, especially if you don't have any direction. And you have all this stuff swirling around in your head and then you start putting that on paper and like, well, that doesn't look like anything. You know, what am I supposed to do with that? They get tangled up. Mm -hmm. But when you have, when you start with the structure like we do, it kind of falls out of you. So let me give you an example. I developed a process called book mapping, which is like a book map is the visual representation of everything that's going mm -hmm. to be. It's not an outline. It's like a mind map. Mm -hmm. So there's two parts of your story. One is all that brilliant information you're going to convey, but the other part of it is you. And you can't, people don't learn from people they don't trust anymore. Yeah, right. They don't. And if you don't ingratiate yourself toward the reader, if you don't share yourself and they don't trust you, they're not going to benefit from your book at all. They're not mm -hmm. even going to read it. So we have a part where you tell your story about, it's kind of, it's like that classic before and after mm -hmm. compare contrasting. I was here, this happened, and now I'm here in yeah. this position to be able to share my life and my experience with you. Mm -hmm. And so we usually start with that and as a map, and we have a bunch of criteria for you to evaluate that you might want to share. But the crux of your book are the chapters, and that's mm -hmm. where your expertise comes through. So you have to have a structure that allows you to fully just cough up everything you know about these things. Mm -hmm. And that's also easy for your readers to follow. So mm -hmm. we develop your chapters in problem solution sets. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what are the problems that your reader audience is likely to have? And then through a very story-driven methodology, you present your solutions. So you're telling stories, stories, mm -hmm. stories, 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 stories. Because we don't want people to just buy your book. We want them to be changed by your message. And if you don't keep them reading, they're not going yeah. to finish the book and get to the, the value of it. Mm -hmm. That's very good. And it's very much like when you have a good speech, or especially a long keynote speech where you, you really use the same kind of format. Yeah. I always say you take them on that roller coaster ride that they are just really feeling the pain and then the, the highs and the lows. It's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because it's a little harder to do when you're in writing than it is when you can, then you, when they can feel the full force of your personality yeah. in an in-person, you know, encounter with you. But we have all kinds of, you know, I teach people, I used to, since I don't teach at the university anymore, but, you know, teaching writing, all these fiction, um, just tactics that we use that, that draw out the emotion and really help people to, feel, they got to feel something in order mm. to, you know, to really be changed by your material. So I <clears throat> had one coach that had shared that in the process of writing, you don't usually do it in one sitting if it's a book really. And it's really important, they said, for you to reread what you read, especially when it's not fresh, to mm -hmm. see if it still resonates, mm -hmm. if it's still the best you way like for you to say it. I like it as much it. the second time. <laughs> You'll think, oh, I wrote that and I thought it was great. And then, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> great. But so I we think talk some... about a lot of drafts and, and different yeah. things. And, and um, as part of our program, when you get toward the, the end, we have you reading your manuscript out loud a couple of times because your ear will catch what your eye can't yeah. see. Yeah, your sure. brain's going to fill in those gaps and, and it's uh, just kind of refine, refine, refine. So you've written it, you've reviewed it, you've refined it. Now you've got to publish it. What happens after that? Well, there's a really important step between your finished draft and publishing. Mm -hmm. That's called editing. <laughs> Every great writer has an even better editor and you mm. cannot 
skip that step. I mean, even in the books that I write, I have an editor. Um, every famous author, you know, has an editor mm-hmm. and it gives you some outside view. And plus you clean up stuff. You know, a lot of our, since our clients aren't writers, I mean, they've been writing emails and stuff. And by the way, I guarantee you, by the time you're finished with this, your emails are going to be so good. <laughs> it will improve. <laughs> and then you'll be a really discriminating writer, like thinking, oh, why would they say that? Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, professional editing is, is critically important. And since most of our clients aren't writer, you know, well, they're not, none of them are, you know, professional mm-hmm. writers. Mm-hmm. We don't want you to have to worry about things like perfect grammar and punctuation. First of all, you're not going to get punctuation, right? You're just not going to, mm-hmm. unless you know all the rules that are in <laughs> this book, the Chicago manual of style, but I do know all of it and all of our staff editors know what's right. So we don't want you to concentrate on that. We want you to concentrate on your message. Mm-hmm. So when we edit it, um, we take what you have done and we polish it up it for for a professional presentation. Right. So after that, we move into the publishing thing. And that's pretty, com- that is a complex process. You know, publishing is a very old industry mm-hmm. and there's a lot of conventions to it, but we take you through, um, you know, book cover design. We give you nor- a number of different designs, um, proofreading. The book needs to be proofread. And we have three proofreaders that it goes through every time. And just the interior layout. We have teams of art staff that that work on everything for you till and we take you through all the things that you know most there's a ton that people who self-publish don't really know about the publishing process and there's some steps that they skip because they're not they don't have access to the resources that professional publishers do but we take you all the way through the end to do even the legal work to register your copyright with the library of congress and just send your book in. And when you're done, your book's in the Library of Congress. So, so cool. Yeah. And and I, I just want to go back to the cover, especially, you know, for those that might think that they want to self-publish and, and the value and the benefit of having someone like you is, I always look at it, it's like, you know, when you walk into a room, how you're dressed makes that first impression, how your stature and everything. And to me, when I pick up a book's cover, that for, that cover is like that magnet that draws me to it. And then it allows me to have interest enough to look at the inside piece. You know, I'm glad you said that, Vicki, because people give me their books all the time. They're, a lot of them are self-published. And it's pretty impressive that they wrote a book. I mean, and got to that point where they have something to hold, but Oh my gosh, nine times out of 10, I think, please don't give that to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And they may have spent the same amount of money, but they didn't have good editing. And then it's like their kid, the cover, and, you know, they needed to mention all their friends' names in their book, you know, as characters. And I'm just like, you know, we won't let you make mistakes like that. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times people have some pretty, uh, confirmed ideas about what that they want their cover to look like. And we will work with you in that, in that framework, but we won't publish something that doesn't, well, I always say, I like things that make me look a little bit better than I really am, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> and but in the all. end, what you want is a professional book product that can stand shoulder to shoulder with anything else out on the market. Yeah. So you talked about, um, the different people you work with. So what are just one or two success stories that you've had thus far? Um, we recently re- um, issued um, a book by an author, Nicole Bell. Bell. It's, it's this one right before behind me. Mm-hmm. Our books win a lot of awards. So you see award seals on many of these. It's called What Lurks in the Woods. And it the story is about um, her and her husband. They they were, she is a MIT brainiac and was into um, <laughs> medical device development. And he's equally as, you know, IQ as to her, but he started showing signs of memory loss and they diagnosed him with early Alzheimer's. And she's yeah. like, Mm-mm, that doesn't wow. make sense. She's like, that does not make sense. I'm going to look into this and I'm going to keep researching this. And so, um, A very long story short, very long. He declined, 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 declined. And during this time, she was doing all this research. 
and found out that the root of his problem was Lyme disease and other oh, tick-borne yeah. illnesses. Yeah. He died a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, complete oblivion, lost all of his cognitive faculties and stuff. And if he had had the antibiotic treatment at the beginning, when she started suggesting it was Lyme disease, he would have been fine. Yeah. And so anyway, um, sh she um, has gotten involved. She's just getting ready to take on a, I think an executive director position with a, a medical device company that does Lyme disease research and all. Oh, and so, wow. you know, they're, they're sa and saving lives there. Um, awesome. Another book that we did was, um, you can kind of see back over my shoulder right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. called CEO Tools 2.0 by Craig, uh, I mean, by um, Jim Canfield. Um, it's a book for CEOs. It's all about important processes for you to implement in your business so that you, you know, you've heard about working on your business and not in your business mm -hmm. and how to do that so that you can step in and out and have the organization run like a top. Yeah. Some of the other things that I think, Vicki, that are um, successes for our clients that we have the capability to do for everyone is that because we construct your chapters in those problem solution sets, mm -hmm. when you're finished, you should be able to take every one of those chapters out and yeah, repurpose the material mm -hmm. for other revenue yeah. producing products. So, you know, you're going to have 12 or 15 chapters about something that you're an expert in. And so you can do, you know, speeches or seminars or workshops or, video training or online courses or podcasts or mm -hmm. start your own podcast, you know, any, a number of things that it lends itself toward because you have that um, basic framework and material to, to, so that you can, well, we know everybody's not going to read your book because everybody right. didn't read books. So right. let's engage your audience readers or not wherever they're already, um, you know, engaged and meet, meet their needs that way. And, and I, I love that. And, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start to get into writing, because I do like to do courses and webinars. And mm -hmm. oftentimes you'll get a book that you love. And so you might get into a book club and discuss it. Mm -hmm. And there are some books, you know, that will have the sections after each chapter where they have exercises and things yep. to do which is like it's okay well there's a course right there that book is a course that's exactly right and those are some of the things that as we get toward the end of writing your book we ask okay now start dropping these things in what mm -hmm. are you know and when you <laughs> when you ask questions it's like faqs on your website yeah, yeah. Ask, they're like should ask questions not you know frequently asked questions these right. are the questions you should be asking and so <laughs> in your study questions ask questions around the nuggets that you don't want them to miss right. and that will again direct the attention toward your uh the points you're trying to make and as you know the person that's the author or the expert it's so great once you get them in class to be able to have discussion time oh, and yeah. to really get ideas for mm -hmm. book number two or book number five <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> So speaking of that, can you speak about writing a series of books? Oh, absolutely. This is another wonderful opportunity that our process lends itself toward that. Again, you know, you you have this purpose statement that at, names the purpose of the book and the audience. But what if you have more than one audience? Mm -hmm. Let's use a financial planner as a, an example. Mm -hmm. You have retirees. You have middle-aged families maybe want need about to send kids off to college and you've got young I call them newly minted adults so <laughs> you know we have similar problem solution sets but once you have that first book all you need to do is go in and swap out the stories for yeah. whatever that age group and those specifics are for for that demographic mm -hmm. and then it's like chicken soup for the soul right yes you know, it's financial planning for this, financial planning for that, you know, whatever your yeah. clever book title is. And we have a number of authors that were on their fifth. One of them were on their fourth and the other one were another one were on their fifth and others have done, you know, multiples. So 
And with, so here's the thing. This is a shortcut, Vicki. Yeah. This is a shortcut so that you can come back and make another book with this mess, same message, different audience, or um, repurpose all your mm. content for different uh, different types of products that you want to develop. Right. Right. And when you start with this one basic structure, it really is the launch pad that mm. lets you deliver your message across multiple venues. So true. All right, it's time now for rapid fire. And so we have <clears throat> a few questions here. What kind of people do you best work with? People who have money. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave that right there. Let it rest. What is the cost to work with you and what's included in that cost? Okay, so to do the book it's a year long process it's 375 a month for 12 months publishing mm -hmm. is 7800 if you work on me a one to one basis it's a little bit more expensive so all in over the course of about 18 months if you do the the low, awesome. the group thing mm -hmm. all in it's about 12 to 14000 dollars if we work one on one it's more like 15 to 20 Okay. So like coaching would be very good. Yeah, it is coaching. Very good. What, yeah. But you get a book at the end. <laughs> and, and some coaches. Yes. All right. Are there people that you do not like to work with? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so I told you that my, I, I told you that we're really focused on, um, high impact books. If people come to me and they just have this all about me attitude and they yeah. really just want to write about themselves and blah, I am always happy to make a referral to someone who has the capacity for that, but I don't, I'm really, we're about offering people hope and help yeah. and solving problems and offering encouragement. Yeah. And all of our books do that. And if, if that's not an element, you know, if that's not an element of your book, nobody wants to read about how great that somebody you thinks are. they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know you're great, but let's, just, let's just package it a little bit different. <laughs> so it's not narcissistic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is the next step for my listening audience to do? And well, I... I I, I, I would love to talk to you about what's going on in your, in your head. Like, what are you thinking about? I mean, I know yeah. you've thought about writing a book or you wouldn't have, you wouldn't still be listening. Yeah, that's right. But, um, and I'd love to just chat about book ideas and there's absolutely no, I'm not going to try to rope you in. I don't want, you know, nothing like that, but on my website, thebookprofessor.com. There's a link up there that says schedule a call with Nancy and we could just chat about your ideas. I mean, I will tell you if it's not a good idea, good. but I'll also probably try to flip your perspective in a little bit and tell you what I think a good idea would be. Based ah, on that's awesome. Yeah. So we talked about where you came from. Go back way back then, <laughs> a couple <laughs> years. What advice do you wish you would have been given at that time? Do the thing you love first. You know, I, gosh, you know what we're all like. It's like if I was, you know, when I was 18, all I wanted to do was write. And I wanted to be a reporter and I wanted to like uncover stuff. <laughs> but I had a lot of zeal and enthusiasm for that. Mm -hmm. And if I had pursued that, I think, I just think that would have been really good advice for me. I went this technical route, which I could do but it was more effort and less satisfying. Yeah, can totally understand that. And and I think so often people around us, especially with, um, you know, folks that you know grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you kind of were all focused on bringing in money, bringing in money and yeah, getting a job, getting yeah. an education that led to, you know, right. providing for yourself and forget about doing something you love. But, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of cases, they also were saying, you know, and you're going to do that for the next 30 or so years. Oh, I know it was like, for so, a life. 
it's a life <laughs> sentence. That's <laughs> right. So now yeah. you're going to get a job that you just happened into and, and you're going to hate it for the next 30 years. Good but that's God. okay. You get eight hours a night to sleep when you're yeah, not there. That's right. right. And a weekend maybe. All right. So you all need to take a moment. If you haven't got your pen or paper, and haven't taken notes, shame on you, but it's time now for you to do that because I'm going to share my screen. And if you're just listening, it's time now for you to take down that website again. So the website is https colon forward slash forward slash the book professor, all one word, dot com. the book professor com. She is on Facebook and LinkedIn. On Facebook, it is the book professor, initial caps, the book professor. And in LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, it's Nancy L. Erickson, Nancy L. Erickson. And she can tell you now a little bit about what you'll find when you do go to the book professor.com. Great. Thanks, Vicki. So the first thing I mentioned is there's a link, there's a schedule a call with Nancy link across the top. You're also going to find um, some information about what kind of clients we work with in different professions, uh, what our different book coaching programs are, and how you can get involved. So, and then we've got a blog. There's a ton of really rich information on our blog about writing a book. Excellent. So it has been, as I knew it would be, so educational, so informational, and so much fun to talk to you about how our listeners can become authors. And as I said, you can start small, but um, definitely, if you need to have a jump start, check out the bookprofessor.com and see if there's any way that Nancy can help you. I'm sure she can. And um, check out the blog. I think that's an excellent idea to dip your toe in the water. Um, and be on the lookout for any of the books that she pointed out, too. Maybe yeah. there's one of those that will inspire you. So thank you so much for being my guest. I really appreciate it. It's been wonderful. And uh, as I always remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Netling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Netling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.